Mark chapter 7 opens with the Pharisees criticising Jesus' disciples for not following the ritual hand cleansing before eating. Now the Pharisees and some of the experts in the law who came from Jerusalem gathered around him and they saw that some of Jesus' disciples ate their bread with unclean hands, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they perform a ritual washing, holding fast to the traditions of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. They hold fast to many other traditions, the washing of cups, pots, kettles and dining couches. The Pharisees and the experts in the law asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with unwashed hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied correctly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honours me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. Having no regard for the commandments of God, you hold fast to human tradition. He also said to them, You neatly reject the commandments of God in order to set up your traditions. For Moses said, Honour your father and mother, and whosoever insults his father or mother must be put to death. But you say that if anyone tells his father or mother, Whatever help you would have received from me is korban, that is a gift for God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother. Thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down, and you do many things like this. So Jesus has quite a lot to say in response to this criticism of disciples eating without washing their hands properly. He makes a few quotes from the Jewish scriptures. His first one is from Isaiah 29 verse 13, and is a reasonable paraphrase of that verse. And also, unlike many New Testament quotes of the Jewish scriptures, it's not particularly taken out of context. The next two quotes about your father and mother from Exodus are also reasonably accurate and in context. Jesus retorts that the law that the Pharisees are insisting on is human rather than divine. And moreover, the Pharisees use this human system of laws to avoid following the true law of God. He gives this rather convoluted example where the true law of God is you should honour your father and mother. He then accuses the Pharisees of abusing the Korban system. Korban is a system of sacrifice or dedication of resources to God. Once something is pronounced Korban, it should be reserved for the use of God or the temple system, and it should not be used by anybody else. It appears that people were neglecting their needy parents and other dependents, and when asked for support, they would say that the items being requested were korban and therefore couldn't be given. And it's implied that the korban was being used as a convenient way not to hand over the needed resources, rather than out of piety. So what is this section doing in Mark? It does serve a number of purposes. It establishes Jesus' adherence to the true law of God rather than to man's laws and that man's laws are a distortion of God's laws. It serves to demonise the Pharisees, particularly as Jesus says, and you do many things like this. In other words, this is only one example of many. Then, as the chapter goes on, Jesus continues the theme of observing the spirit of the law rather than the letter of human interpretation of the law. Verse 14. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, everybody, and understand. There is nothing outside of a person that can defile him by going into him. Rather, it is what comes out of a person that defiles him. Now when Jesus had left the crowd and entered the house, his disciples asked him about the parable. He said to them, Are you so foolish? Don't you understand that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him? For it does not enter his heart but his stomach, and then goes out into the sewer. This means all foods are clean. He said, What comes out of a person defiles him. For from within, out of the human heart, come evil ideas, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, evil, deceit, debauchery, envy, slander, pride and folly. All these evils come from within and defile a person. Strong words and a bit of philosophy as well. Perhaps a little real divine inspiration might have made him say out of the human brain comes evil ideas, but that was common currency at the time. It's quite a good list of sins too. Evil ideas, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, evil, deceit, debauchery, envy, slander, pride and folly. Not quite aligning with the seven deadly sins, and in this case there are twelve sins. 
but it's a good list. It's not quite clear what Jesus means by sexual immorality, since he also cites adultery. If he was taking a leaf out of Paul's book, he would have been referring to homosexuality, but we don't have any evidence that he was aware of Paul. His mention of pride is perhaps a little ironic, considering the next pericope. Verse 24. After Jesus left there, he went to the region of Tyre. When he went into a house, he did not want anyone to know, but he was not able to escape notice. Instead, a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek of Syrophoenician origin. She asked him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be satisfied first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She answered, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, Because you said this, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. She went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. This section starts on familiar territory. Jesus tries for privacy, but he's noticed, and this woman arrives, who Mark tells us was a Greek, that is a Gentile, underlining it by giving her a Syrophoenician origin. By the children, Jesus means the children of Israel. The idea being that Jesus came from the Jews, and then he gets quite rude, saying it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. At which she retorts, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Jesus likes this answer and does what she asks. Incidentally, this is the only miracle in Mark that's performed by remote control, where Jesus is not present to do the miraculous deed. Anyway, the purpose of this section of Mark isn't entirely clear. If it was to communicate that Jesus' ministry was for everybody, including Gentiles, not just Jews, then he's got Jesus being rather anti-Gentile. But he does in the end do what the woman wants. Or it might be that Mark is trying to illustrate that Jesus is a root to spirituality. He isn't spirituality himself, and therefore his opinions don't necessarily affect what God's power can achieve. And finally in this chapter, just before the halfway point in the Gospel of Mark, we have the story of healing the deaf mute. Verse 31. Then Jesus went out again from the region of Tyre and came through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had difficulty speaking, and they asked him to place his hands on him. After Jesus took him aside privately, away from the crowd, he put his fingers in the man's ears, and after spitting he touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and said with a sigh, Ephaphatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened and his tongue loosened and he spoke plainly. Jesus ordered them not to tell anyone, but as much as he ordered them not to do this, they proclaimed it all the more. People were completely astounded and said, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. There are a couple of things to note here. Again, Mark gives us an Aramaic original and then translates it. The word ephaphatha, that is, be open. We have Jesus handling the man's ears and tongue and spitting actions that have parallels in the next chapter in another interesting miracle. But in this case, Jesus takes the deaf man aside and does the healing privately in order to allow him to say, don't go and tell anyone. But then Mark doesn't say he went and told everyone with his newfound lucid voice, but they went and told everyone. So they must be the they that were referred to earlier in this section, that is, those who brought the man to Jesus. It is possibly significant that it occurs here in the middle of the Gospel where a deaf mute is cured, and it may coincide with a relaxation of Mark's secrecy narrative, as we'll see in chapter 8. Verse 